everyone it's Ross in today's video we're gonna be starting some seeds um, I want to talk first though about what you guys are gonna need just some things that I recommend um, kind of how to do this in an indoor setting so that you're not really making a mess and there's a million ways to do this there's a million videos on this topic um, you know this is just my way of doing it and I think it's pretty interesting so let me show you guys what I have going on down here uh, we have bins and I think bins are quite important unless you have some kind of tray that's already built into your pots but I like to use these little pots here um, these are called cow pots and they're a biodegradable material that when you put this into the soil you don't have to take away the pot you can break away part of it but all that will kind of break apart the roots will grow through that it will degrade um, you won't have a problem transplanting there'll be limited transplant shock this way so I highly recommend these. They also give a little bit of nutrients because they're made of cow manure. So, you know, it's a nice little thing here. The, the pot is actually some form of nutrients. I think it's a pretty interesting concept. There are other alternatives, right? Depending on what you guys are trying to do, you can use plastic, you can use peat pots, I mean, you can use all kinds of different things. I don't think one is necessarily so far superior to the other, but what I do find is that if you can get a really well-rooted out plant, in these three by three inch by three inch pots come spring you got yourself a really nice transplant and uh, that's kind of what you pick up at home depot and those big box stores is they put them in pretty large size containers and they get to a pretty decent size so that when you actually transplant them out you know you got yourself a really nice plant that's really kick-started to the season i mean that's the whole point of the whole this right is that when we're starting seeds, we want to get a nice start to the season. Otherwise, there's no point. Otherwise, we should have just direct seeded to begin with. Um, and then what I've got here underneath is a bin, right? And this will catch all the water. I can water these guys from the bottom up. I don't need to water them from the top. This will act as a, act as a wicking system with the soil, with the pots. All this will get wet. We need to make sure, though, that we're labeling these things. And I have those labels downstairs. I forgot to bring them up for this video. But we're using vinyl blinds, vinyl plant tags. Uh, we write on them with pencil. We did a couple videos on that very recently. Um, you may want to use yourself a nice little heat mat. We've got some in here that I just am not using at current current time because my rooting environment's already really warm as it is. Um, what we'll need to do here is actually select, uh, kind of take these larger pieces out, this kind of this big pieces of straw but uh, we have a really nice base of soil in here that I grow all of my potted plants in. This is an incredible soil mixture and this is all where it's at. This is so important. I highly recommend it because you need something well draining for these little seedlings, right? They put out these little roots, they need a lot of air. And if you have really fine particles like peat moss, I think it's just a little bit of a detriment. So what a lot, a lot of people do is they'll take the peat moss We'll mix that in with vermiculite, with perlite, with rice holes, with bark, all kinds of different things. So this is really important. We're just gonna fill the soil up here as soon as we mixed out all this, you know, all this larger material. We're gonna take this out and then we're gonna simply just fill this in into these pots. And I should probably, what I should do is take these out of the bin and do it in here so I'm not making a mess in the bin itself. If you leave any organic material in the bin and it gets wet and stays wet, that's gonna attract fungus gnats and we don't want that. So we've got ourselves a nice little soil mixture here. It's thawed out, that's really important because if the soil is not thawed out, like at the bottom here, you're gonna have yourself a problem. You're not gonna be able to do this. So, uh, you know, if you're like me and you live in a cold place and the ground outside and all the soil in the pots outside is frozen, this is really important. Um, I would also suggest we're kind of not done at this point because we still have some larger particles at the top. We really want a fine mixture on the top, get good germination that way. So kind of take out these larger pieces of bark or if there's any straw still in here, you know, get rid of that. What I like to use my mix is the same thing I use for all my potted plants, all my rooted cuttings. Every single thing I use is 50% compost. 50% pine bark mulch. 
Um, really fine pine bark chips is really what it is. And it really does a wonderful job. Um, and we just need to keep this stuff moist. I think gonna be the biggest challenge is when we put the stuff in the bin, we're not gonna cover this bin with a humidity dome, right? We're not gonna create that, but there will be some humidity that gets trapped on the sides here. But for the most part, we wanna keep the humidity in this bin really close to the humidity in the air in the grow closet downstairs. For those of you who don't know about the grow closet, go look at any of the videos I've done thus far this winter time on rooting fig cuttings. Um, but what we're gonna do here, because it's so dry in the basement, it's 20% humidity. We're gonna cover the, the top of this bin with some saran wrap, some plastic wrap, uh, and that's gonna create that humidity dome that we want. But only just to get these, uh, the soil here, keep that moist and get the, the seedlings to root. And if we can get these seedlings to root out, or take, or germinate, I should say. And then once they germinate, they're showing some good life, uh, we take off the saran wrap. We don't want them to form too many leaves because we want them to be adjusted to the room's humidity, 20 to 25% that it currently is. So that's all we're really doing. That's all we really need. Uh, we're gonna have more videos to come on starting seeds. Hopefully you guys are up for this. You wanna see what this is about. Uh, it's now March 1st. So this is the time that I'm gonna be starting seeds for a lot of my different crops. Um, we're gonna be direct seeding a whole lot of stuff out into the garden bed over the fence behind it. That's where a lot of the cool loving crops will be, where a lot of that morning sun is. And where that is, um, we're gonna direct seed a whole lot of things come about uh, mid-March. So because it's mid-March at that point, um, we're just gonna put a row cover over that. The temperatures outside should be pretty decent enough to keep those little cool loving crop seedlings alive. And uh, we should be good to go with those. But all the heat loving crops, I think I said today is March 1st. Today is like pretty close to February 1st. But on February 1st, we'll be direct seeding a lot of the heat loving crops. And we'll go into detail about what we're doing, but all the heat loving crops are gonna be transplanted out into this bed here that's next to the figs here. This is where all the potted trees are overwintered for the winter time, covered with straw. So that kind of gives you guys an idea of what's going on in the backyard. But all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this one. Uh, if you want to see more about seeds, let me know down in the, in the comments below. And I'll catch you all later in the next video. See you tomorrow. Take care.